Welcome to the Manifesting Doll Podcast. I'm Barbara Orban from No Diet Babe. I'm a spiritual mindset coach and weight loss expert. If you are a spiritual babe wanting to up-level your life around your body, health, wellness, spirituality, law of attraction and manifestation, then this is the podcast for you. I'm here to give you the tools, teachings, and strategies to manifest the body and life of your dreams. As spiritual babes, we know to focus on love as opposed to fear. So get ready to learn how to implement spiritual teachings to weight loss, wellness, and your daily life coming from a place of love and abundance. This is a celebration of how we can shift our inner perception of ourselves and watch our outer selves shift you can become the best version of yourself and I'm here to help. So let's get started. Hey babes, welcome to today's episode of the Manifesting Doll podcast. I'm Barbara Orban from No Diet Babe and I hope you've had a lovely weekend. It's been really, really nice here because it's actually summer now here in Melbourne and finally the rain is kind of subsiding and (laughs) getting a little bit of sunshine and warm weather. Spent some time with my family, which was really nice and then had dinner with some friends last night. So enjoying these summer times because I don't know about you guys like when you have a winter Christmas I've never experienced it but I just love during Christmas time like having a summer Christmas I love how social people get and how it's nice to go out and have a lovely dinner and just enjoy just enjoy like getting out and about because sometimes in Melbourne like during winter it's so so cold and you just don't even want to leave the house so it's really really nice so I can't I can't imagine what it's like for you guys if you're like in a winter Christmas what it would be like (laughs) but yeah if you get to experience a summer Christmas then it's it's actually really nice maybe one day I'll have to head on over to a place where they have a winter Christmas. (laughs) But anyway, today I want to talk to you guys about um, when it feels like weight is easy to gain and hard to lose. So I want to specifically talk about certain beliefs that you might hold around your weight and you have this perception and I feel like society creates this perception as well. And like, I feel like when you watch TV and, and you watch like dieting shows and stuff like that, it's this whole idea of like how, um, like weight is such a big issue in the world. Right. And how it's so when weight is easy to gain, And oh my God, it's so normal for us to gain weight when we aren't dieting or it's so normal for us to gain weight when we're not um, forcing ourselves to eat healthy and it's so easy to gain weight when we travel. It's so easy to gain weight when we um, have certain certain circumstances like, um, oh, my partner brings home junk food or um, my kids want the junk food and then I end up eating it or um, the food's there and I can't throw it out. I can't waste it. I, I, I bought too much food and, and now I can't waste it. So all of these situations um, make it feel like weight is easy to gain and hard to lose. And I want to talk about that belief and how we, how we can switch our view of the switch the perceptions that we have around this because that's really important because the way that you'll get to a point when you can switch because okay this is the thing which I notice about people and beliefs (laughs) so when people say stuff like oh yeah this is how my metabolism is or this is the type of person I am and these Uh, my experiences, this is, I've always had a really big appetite or I've always struggled with my weight or I've always um, craved 
lots of sugary foods or it's like this identity that we have of ourselves we we say it like we express it but then we kind of energetically when we say it we energetically just feel powerless right like this is how i am you literally say how you feel or what your your like actual belief is but the energy around it when you say it right is that of powerlessness okay and a sense of like this is how i am this is my identity right and i want you to instead when you say a belief or like a current situation that you have going on in your head I want you to instead shift the energy around it to be of like curiosity and like I always say, like a non-judgmental curiosity, but also in that moment, it's like, but how do I want my reality to be, right? Because what we're focusing on, we're focusing on how it is right now, right? And then we're re-manifesting how it is right now. So the situation is I struggle with X, Y, Z. And then you say that belief and you say, I feel like weight loss is hard. And then it just keeps on re-manifesting that way. And so when the belief comes up, you don't want to feel powerless to it or question how to shift it. You just want to kind of tell your brain and keep it really simple and be like reality can be changed with my thoughts and if I'm believing this therefore I want don't want to focus on that I want to focus on what I want to create right so that's just a little bit of an a just a little bit little bit of a strategy for you Um, that you can start implementing but pretty much what I notice is that people will express their beliefs from an energy of this is how it is and then I can't change it right and what you have to start realizing is that you can change everything and it doesn't mean that you'll change it today it just means that if you're persistent you'll change it and your beliefs will change and then your reality will change and the problem the reason why you you have so much resistance around it is because sometimes you you feel silly if you try and then it doesn't work and that's probably like the biggest that's always like the fear of failure is coming up because your ego wants to protect you so it's going to trick you and and find ways to play it safe so that you don't grow right and you really just have to become so aware of when this is happening when the ego is keeping you playing small keeping you from changing etc etc but let's let's focus on this particular belief that that weight loss is hard and weight is easy to gain right let's let's specifically talk about this perception and how how you can actually sh- start to shift it by playing around with your perceptions cuz cuz anytime you have a belief right you kind of have to chip away at it before it's not like for example if i'm feeling scarce around money for example because I believe money is hard to come by. It's not like I'm going to wake up the next day and be like, um, money flows to me easily, right? Because remember also like manifestation is about how you feel. And so if you you say uh, weight is like weight, it's, it's easy for me to lose weight, then all of a sudden... Or perhaps you'll be like, it's easy for me to be at my goal weight. 
but you don't feel good when you say it, right? Because there's so much resistance around it. So when I first started affirmations around uh, money, they triggered me, right? They so like massively triggered me. Whereas now they make me feel good. They make me feel abundant. But that was like, I had to go through a stepping stone and I had to be quite persistent and I had to break down why I was getting triggered when I said the affirmation, right? So this is more like generalized manifestation stuff where, you know, you you have to have awareness. You don't just say the affirmations. Um, I mean, you do to a certain extent say the affirmations and if you repeat them enough, they becoming they they stay in your brain which is a really good thing because then they do become part of your belief like your repeating thought patterns and that's kind of how you can transition them to be a belief because if you like for example I have lots of affirmations uh, stuck up on my walls and even if I'm not like consciously like paying attention to them the more they're there the more comfortable I become with them being true and I've noticed that some of them when I first wrote them I wrote them as a stepping stone like rather than um like saying rather than for example saying I don't know I I am rich or like I have control around food easily or I am healthy or whatever it's like you you write, I am choosing to believe, blah, 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 blah. And that was like a stepping stone for me. That's kind of what I learned through through a few people. I think a few people talk about this and um, like we were talking about it when I went on the Bali retreat with Catherine. But um, yeah, like a stepping stone to the affirmation, right? But like... I find for me that over time I become more comfortable with the affirmation but also because it starts manifesting into reality because I've worked on the triggers around why like why I don't think that to be true and then so with when weight is easy to gain and hard to lose you really want to start breaking down why like why because when you just say the belief and you're like, I just need to change this belief, I just need to change this belief that weight is easy to gain and hard to lose. But if you're not breaking it down, because whenever you have a belief, you have to, you have to like break it down. <laughs> you have to ask yourself where it's coming from because in your brain, right, there's going to be all these different connections. It's going to be connected to all the different experiences that you've had where you've reinforced this belief. And so you're going to ask yourself why and start to contemplate where this is coming from, why you feel this way. And when you start investigating yourself like this, your brain starts working with you and stuff starts coming up, which which. I notice for me is so, so helpful because now with my journey around money as well, I'm able to notice the feeling of scarcity so quickly now. Like I can just go, oh my God, this is a scarcity thought. This is a scarcity feeling right now. And then once you've like developed that skill, you literally just switch your energy into abundance, right? And with manifesting weight loss, like in my manifest weight loss course, I talk about the specific feelings that you need to switch. Just like when you're scarce with money, you want to switch to abundance. And really, I mean, the weight loss stuff is a lot about self-acceptance and self-love and uh, having permission around food and and, um, enjoying food in in a non emotional eating way because I think that when I say enjoy food people use it for something other than hunger and that's that's the the issue there when you're using it for something other than hunger but pretty much 
yeah, like the, the experiences that you've had where weight is easy to gain and hard to lose, you ask why, like, why do you feel this way? Why do you feel like weight is easy to gain and hard to lose? And I want you to remember when you're investigating these things is that reality, your reality is a result of what you believe, right? And your thoughts and feelings. So coming at it from that perspective, right? So you can start to look at, well, is this how I want it to be? And it's not like, so what you might have resistance around, what I'm imagining some of you might have resistance around this is that you'll be like, yeah, but when I go out to dinner and I'm on holidays and we have, you know, a buffet breakfast and then we have like all these indulgent lunches and dinners and then we'll have like drinks and then we have desserts and we're pretty much eating the whole time or you like go to a Christmas dinner and there's just food everywhere. What's actually happening there, the reason why you do gain weight in those situations, like I've said from a practical standpoint, is because it's that all or nothing. You're doing that all or nothing approach. So when you're good, you're good. When you're bad, you're really bad, right? That kind of all or nothing. And the other thing is that, I mean, like I say, from a practical standpoint, right, weight loss is about a calorie deficit. And when you go in a calorie deficit for a long period of time, you get weight loss. Now, what the mistake a lot of people make is they go in a very large calorie deficit, their body adapts to this lower calorie intake and then when they do eat a lot of food it your body does gain weight because it's adapted to this newer lower calorie intake right and so when I actually lost the weight I lost it on a higher calorie intake as opposed to a lower calorie intake so the I didn't cut out like carbohydrates or anything like that I allowed myself to be in a calorie deficient and then certain days like I was really intuitive about it which actually I want to do a course on on doing that intuitively and how you can do macros intuitively but some of you don't want to do that and that's completely fine because you can lose weight just through intuitive eating because really what the issue is it's it's emotional eating and that's what I mean by when you go out and you have these situations where you're like oh my god there's so much food and then you end up eating a lot of food it's it's because really what's happening here is that again you're you're conditioned you're not conditioned to listen to genuine hunger. And that's why this is happening. You see all the food and you get so excited about it. It's like, oh my God, look at all this food. And that's kind of from childhood as well, because we do get excited about food. So I remember for me, when I, um, when I was working on my perceptions of food and and learning to listen to my genuine hunger. I remember I was at mum and dad's. I was living with my mum and dad and my mum would come home from the shops when I was a kid and I'd get really excited about what she bought from the shops. And then I'd be like, did she buy any junk food? Like that was my thing. Like when mum would come home from, from the shops, it'd be like, what do I get to eat now? I'm so excited because... I get to eat something because also like food because food, of course, like, of course, it's going to be like that for all of us. Right. But what I had to play around with was I can be excited about the food. It's not that you're not excited about the food, but you check in with yourself. Am I hungry right now? Right. Because that's the key indicator there. 
am I hungry right now? And in the beginning, you'll be like, yeah, I am. (laughs) Because I remember being like that. Yeah, I remember being like that. Yeah, of course I'm hungry. Duh, I'm always hungry. But that's because I was an emotional eater. It wasn't, it's different now. Like now it's really obvious to me, yeah? And I'm like, well, duh, you're not actually hungry. It's the emotional hunger. Because if you're always hungry, that doesn't make sense. Like nobody should be always hungry. That's not how our biology works. That's not how physiology of the body is. And also you want to, like regardless, you want to convince yourself of that, yeah? Yeah. Because notice, like, I made a decision. I made a decision that this is how it should be. Energetically, I've made a decision that there's, like, genuine hunger and this is how it is and you don't eat unless you're genuinely hungry kind of thing. I mean, of course, there's situations where I'll eat um, because I want to, but, like, like I've said, I don't want to lose weight. I'm at in a place where I don't have to be, I don't want to go too far and lose weight. You know what I mean? Because I'm already quite thin. So it's different for me than for you when you're wanting to lose weight because you want to be in a calorie deficient, right? For me, it's like more freedom now around food because um, I'm there's no need to lose weight. But when you're wanting to lose weight and then you have to be in a calorie deficient, you want to change your perceptions of things because you don't want to be sabotaging yourself by having this perception of food where you're an emotional eater, right? Okay, but in terms of changing changing this belief around weight being easy to gain and hard to lose... What, okay, so let's break it down, right? Why why is it easy to gain weight? And then you write down all the reasons why it's easy to gain weight. And then on the other column, you write down all the reasons why it's hard to lose weight. Actually, if you go to my free trainings, right, there is a worksheet where it says on one column, reasons why I want to lose weight, reasons why I don't want to lose weight. And it's actually the same thing that I'm pretty much asking you to do. Um, It's kind of the same thing. So if you wanted to, you could do that. And um, like on the one column, it's like, why reasons I want to lose weight. You could do the same thing, but that change it to reasons why it's hard to lose weight, reasons why it's easy to gain weight kind of thing. And then on the one column, you're like, because food is always available or like I'm always in situations where there's food or I'm always traveling for work or um, like whatever's coming up for you. And why is it hard? Like, why is it hard for me to lose weight? And then think of any reasons why uh, because I eat too much sugar, because I eat too many carbs, because uh, when I travel, there's no healthy food, because um, like whatever's coming up for you, right? But then I want you to view this from a different perspective, because remembering that you your reality doesn't have to be this way. Whatever you've written down can be shifted like all of it can be shifted because trust me a lot of what the world has a perception around weight is just it's like the placebo effect you've made it hard for yourself because you've built a perception of how hard it is and think about it right think about it from this place there has not been a time in the world where we have had more nutrition knowledge than we do now. Like we're always expanding in knowledge. We're not really going backwards, are we? We're always expanding in knowledge. Yet people continue, the average BMI is still on the rise. 
And then if you look back at the average BMI back in like the 1940s and and 1920s, it was so much less. The average BMI was so much less back in like the 1920s and 1930s. And yeah, I get what you're going to think. You'll be like, yeah, but there wasn't as much processed food out there, et cetera, et cetera. But again, that's your ego. The voice that comes in and says that, that's your ego and that's the problem. That's the problem is that believing that you are powerless to the situation that you are in. Okay, so yeah, times have changed from the 1920s. But are there people in this world who don't have a weight issue regardless of the fact that they live in a society where there's more processed food? And the truth is there's loads of people out there who don't struggle with their weight. Loads. I mean, just look at all the supermodels that are like super, super thin and stuff. Like I get that some of them might be like doing that in an unhealthy way and they're quite have a poor relationship with food. And let's not think about that. I'm not saying focus on that. I'm saying focus on the people that are genuinely just naturally slim. I mean, there's countries in Europe where people don't have as much of a weight issue and there's loads of pasta and pastries and stuff like that. And so it's, again, it's just a perception. And regardless, because if your ego comes in and says, but, 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 but this is, this is, no, don't listen to that voice. Choose the reality that you want to experience and decide that that is what gets to be true for you. That's literally what you have to do. If you want to use, if you want to talk about discipline and willpower, I don't mean discipline in terms of action. I mean discipline in terms of thought. You want to be disciplined with your thoughts because that's how you energetically decide that you're going to live life a certain way, that you're not going to struggle with this issue any longer. And it's not like I said, it's not like you're going to change tomorrow, but when you're persistent with this, you will change. And so what I want you to decide is that, well, okay, this is how it gets to be for me, regardless of how everyone else seems to think that it's a struggle or that, that, um, the food is making us fatter and whatever is going on like oh my god we eat so much more sugar now than we did in the 1920s or whatever and that's why we're fatter and it's like yeah but if you're choosing to believe that then yes of course that's going to be true for you whereas you you can shift your perception of it and Yeah, you can shift your perception on needing sugar that much too because, yes, I still consume sugar on a daily basis, but I'm not like craving freaking cakes like I used to. I'm not, oh my God, I used to just crave sugar so much and then I'd try to replace it with a protein bar. I'd try to replace it with a like a protein ball and make my own homemade chocolate and all this shit I don't have to do all that anymore because I just don't crave it like I got given a free protein bar right at the gym the other day and it's just I ate one of them and then the other one I've just I don't feel like it because it just the whole fake sugar taste and how it's just so like it just doesn't appeal to me anymore. It's like, why would I want, like, I'm not saying that I won't sit down and have an indulgent dessert, but it's not that often. And I just don't have any, like, I'm just like, why would I want this fake sugar tasting thing? Like my perception of it has changed where I used to be like, oh my God, I can't get enough of this. But That's because it was coming from an emotional place. It was coming from the emotional attachment to that food, which I had to break down, right? So pretty much it's the same for everybody. It's just all in the mindset of um, changing your relationship to food. And the problem is, is when you just decide that you're going to cut it out from a place of taking away and you're not giving to yourself, then of course you're going to like, of course, it's going to be sabotaged, right? Because you have to give, you have to give when you're taking away. 
And so that's that's just how it works. That's just how we work as human human beings, right? But anyway, what I kind of got a bit lost there, <laughs> which I do sometimes. And also, um, yeah, maybe you can tell by my voice I'm a little bit tired today. But um, pretty much like what this whole perception that you have around weight being this hard thing, weight because of the the situations, you just want to pay attention to when you're making it really complicated because that's what I used to do, right? I used to make it really complicated and be like, oh, but because like if you start searching the internet on weight loss, you will seriously, you, you start like building yourself like this ditch and you start climbing into this ditch and digging yourself deeper and deeper into the ground. That's what I used to do. Honestly, the more you learn about like all this shit that's out there on the internet about weight loss in terms of like, oh, I've got to worry about my carbohydrate timing or I don't know, like meal timing or there's so much shit out there of all the different things you need to worry about. It's like, oh, I need to work on this and this and this. But it's like, guys, weight loss, calorie deficient. It's like all these rules around you shouldn't eat uh, corn because they're a high sugar vegetable and therefore you'll sabotage your weight loss. You can only have this many times you can only have like sweet potato this many times per week or bread only only on one day per week I don't know like whatever rules these silly food rules right and it's like if you wanted to right you could eat if your if you your maintenance calories was 2400 and you ate 1,800 calories worth of like whatever, I don't know, ice cream, you'd still lose weight because you're in a calorie deficient. I mean, it gets more complicated, yes, because if you're eating certain foods that are very calorie dense, you're not going to feel full very easily and therefore you will need more of this calorie dense food in order to get to the same level of satisfaction so there is that you want to choose foods that make you feel satisfied that aren't to like for example chocolate if you decide to have chocolate for dinner by the time you get full on chocolate you've eaten a lot of calories right And so you do want to play around with it. This is why I also just from a practical standpoint would not eat any dessert foods on an empty stomach. I would only eat dessert foods if I've had a decent meal first because of that reason, because you're going to eat more of the high calorie food and you're not going to get full. So again, this is how you're being more intuitive as well, because you're like, what kind of foods make me feel full? Like what makes me feel satisfied, right? Um, not from an emotional standpoint, but from a genuine hunger standpoint, right? Because you're coming from an energy of love. You're coming from an energy of, hey, I want to feel biologically full. Like I don't want to feel deprived. I don't want to feel hungry. Of course not. That's not good either, right? So yeah, pretty much um, that's kind of what I want you to do around that. But So, but anyway, I kind of get lost on topics and then I start going down that topic and I'm like, I got to tell you guys more about this and this and this. And then I'm like, hang on, but what was I actually talking about? Like the whole gist of today's episode um, is about the belief that weight is hard. And then I start talking about like practical strategies. But anyway, let's actually get back on topic where I'm actually talking about this belief that weight is easy to gain and hard to lose, right? Because I feel like a lot of it comes from all the information. You're getting too much information and it overwhelms you. And like I said, when I was losing weight, and I've said this previously, I legit detoxed from all of that information. So for example, if 
something came on TV talking about weight loss or I was flicking a magazine and somebody was like, I lost 30 pounds doing this diet. I basically did not focus on it, right? Because I kept on focusing on the wrong thing. And law of attraction, what you focus on expands. So if you keep on focusing on the solution, it's like, I'm looking for the solution to my weight loss. I'm looking for the solution to my weight loss. And I keep on wanting to learn more information on the correct diet and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that you don't want to work on how to shift your mindset about weight loss. Yes, you want to work on shifting your mindset around weight loss but and I'm not saying also that you can't educate yourself from a nutrition standpoint what I'm saying is that the energy around what I used to do was not the correct energy for me to be in vibrational match to losing weight because I kept on being in the problematic energy right <laughs> I was in the problematic energy I was coming at it from a place that when like weight loss is this hard thing that I haven't figured out yet and I've got to figure it out. Like there's something missing. I've, it's just such a hard thing to do. And then it was, whereas now it's so easy to lose weight. Oh my God. It's like almost the opposite issue I have now. It's like, holy shit, it's such an effort to try and gain weight. (laughs) How did I change that? It's not a coincidence. It's not luck. It's that I changed my beliefs and I changed my perception of everything and then my reality changed. That's just manifestation. That's just how we work as, that's how life works, right? Mm. It's like not, it's not that crazy or out there. It's just, that's just how it is, right? And so you just have to shift your thinking around it and that's what I did. And then uh, now the opposite is true for me. And it's not like I woke up one day and that was the case for me. It was like a general, like a gradual transition, but I didn't allow myself to get overwhelmed with all these perceptions of why weight is hard to lose. All of these things around how weight is hard to lose. And I instead chose to focus on situations where I had witnessed where people were able to eat a range of foods and still stay slim. I focused on that. I focused on that. I focused on how when I was a kid and how easy it was to play and and eat small portions and not feel deprived because I was so enjoyed in life. It matters what you start focusing your perception on, right? And it matters what, how you're feeling, right, and, and all of that. So when you have this belief that weight is easy to gain and hard to lose, you've got to pay attention to what reality you're focusing on. Are you focusing on the parts of society where everybody is struggling around weight or are you focusing on people that there are loads of people who don't struggle around weight and are naturally slim? Like, what are you focusing on? What are you choosing to focus on as the reality for you? And the thing is, is that your ego will come in and not want you to do this again, like I said before, because of fear of failure. But you have to realize that this is just your ego. You pretty much have to get to the point where you're like, like even I've been working with, like I said, with Genevieve. And I love Genevieve, Genevieve Rackham. I just, I love working with her so much. And I love how she says, she's like, nice try brain. (laughs) And that's really been working for me because I literally, whenever the ego comes up, it's like, nice try brain. (laughs) And I find that to be such a loose, like it's, it works perfectly. Like it's, it's, it works so well because then you're really coming from it in the right energy. Like you're like, nice try brain. You're not like, oh my God, there's my ego again. Like, what do I do about this? Oh, and then you're like in a shit energy. (laughs) So you don't want to be like that. You want to be like, 
I'm in alignment right now and there goes my ego. Nice try. I'm not falling for that. I'm staying in my high vibration right now. And that's kind of how it is. And yeah, there's times like even for me now where I fall into the ego, not around food and weight, but around other things. And I fall in, but you just have to get to you have to start realizing that your reality is based on your thoughts. And that's like I was saying, you have to be disciplined with your thoughts. You do. You have to be disciplined because what do you want? Do you want, like, do you get, and this is what I realize about myself too, is that people, like, I can get addicted to the drama. I can get addicted to the, the struggle, like, because we all get addicted to that. It's, we like it's not something to be ashamed of in a way because like we all do it we get addicted to the drama we get addicted to the struggle and it's like we just want to keep on talking about our problems we want to keep on complaining and talking about our problems but it's not fixing anything and like even i think it was genevieve that said there's no such thing as a problem only problematic thoughts and i think maybe that's from abraham hicks like i'm not too sure but like Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Abraham Hicks said that. There's no such thing as a problem, only problematic thoughts. And like, it's the same thing. It's like whenever literally your brain wants to start talking about, because your chatter would be like trying to make weight this complicated thing. And then literally like, you're just like, nice try brain. (laughs) And that's, I mean, I didn't literally, when I was doing it, I didn't literally say nice try brain, but it was, It was the same energy like I, even though I didn't quite say anything in my head, I was just aware of, oh, there I go again trying to overcomplicate it. Let's make it simple. And that was just me being disciplined with my brain. So when I was in the process of losing weight and uh, my brain would be like, oh, but you had this meal and what if this is what's going to happen now and this you didn't blah, 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 you fucked this up and now you got to do this and what are you going to do tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. It's like, ah, oh, what am I doing right now? I'm not in alignment. Hang on a second. Let's make this easy. Okay, back into alignment. That's kind of what I did. And like back then I didn't use the word alignment. I used the word anxiety as like anxiety. That to me felt like anxiety, right? So back then I didn't really know the word alignment. I just knew that when I went into anxiety and overwhelm, I'd I'd not lose weight. (laughs) And so I realized that I had to go, okay, there I'm doing that thing again now. Uh, Let me just shift back into this place where I'm not in anxiety and overwhelmed about my weight and this place where it's easy and I don't have to stress about it. So yeah, you you do that while simultaneously working on your emotional attachment to food because it's not like you're just ignoring the fact that when you're an emotional eater and you're eating copious amounts of food that you're not going to be able to lose weight it's like no you that becomes easier to overcome again because you shift your perception of it to be easy as well okay so that's like kind of how you're going to shift all of this Um, because that's all it is. The reason why you gain weight back, the reason why you have trouble losing weight is your perception of weight weight being this hard thing also because of your emotional attachment to food. So from your ego's perspective, from your survival mechanism's perspective, it's in your best interest to stay where you are because food is such an important thing to help you cope, right? So You just have to distance yourself and view yourself from a bird's eye view and be like, oh, that's why this is happening. So I just got to rearrange this and this and this and be more disciplined with my thoughts and not allow myself to fall back in to that place where I'm not in alignment. And that's pretty much it. And like I've been saying, like learning from Genevieve around money, it's like she says as well, you just got to trust alignment. You just got to trust alignment. And you're so, when when you're in that place, and I get it with food, like I used to be in that place, you're so afraid to trust that everything's working out. Like trusting alignment is scary because it's like, I remember being like, 
but how can I trust myself around food? Like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not trustworthy around food. And yeah, for me, that was a stepping stone process. It really was, which I do um, in the academy. I do teach strategies about um, and more so like with my private coaching as well with my clients, like I have a lot of strategies on how to get to that stepping stone of trusting yourself. But really, like I mean, with coaching one-on-one clients, it's really about that individual and their emotional attachment to food. That's really what the goal is, is to actually uncover what's really going on, why why there is certain behaviors that sabotage the weight loss. And then you just break it down. It's not hard. Like it isn't. It isn't hard. It's just that we need to repeat. We need to repeat and you need to be in the right energy. You need to not, like like I was saying, you need to be disciplined in your energy. That's what it is about. It's not about disciplined in your action. It's disciplined in your energy because when you're in the right energy, you're going to take the right action anyway. And it won't feel hard. <laughs> Trust me. Like it's, it doesn't feel hard for me to choose certain foods over others. Or it doesn't feel hard to go out and eat pizza but not want to have like... I mean last night, yeah, I had a lot of pizza. But that's because I was genuinely hungry. And I knew that it was going to... Like it's not one of those things where I'm overeating. But like, it's not about what, what it takes to lose weight so much as how my energy has shifted so it's easy for me now. Because you can understand strategy, but still not be able to apply it. So many people out there, even like personal trainers that understand and have so much knowledge of how to lose weight, but still can't implement it for themselves. So it isn't about that. It's disciplined in your energy, right? So that's what you need to remember. Anyway, guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you have a lovely week and I'd love for you to leave me an iTunes review. That would be so, so helpful helpful, uh, because... So I've reached actually um, from a few days ago, 10,000 downloads on this podcast, which I'm so happy. And, you know, I'm so grateful for all of you that listen in on me and listen to me ramble on about stuff and uh, like here. And I love you guys so much. And I'm, I'm so, I so want to help you all. And I'm so thankful that you're here. But I'm also wanting to help more people. So I'm wanting this podcast to reach more people. And I'd love for you to help me in doing that by leaving me a review um, or sharing this podcast with somebody that you know that might benefit from all of this information that I've put together on all of these episodes, right? And so that would really help help out because that's my mission. That's why I'm here is to help all of you with 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 weight loss manifestation and with just all things manifestation and things about making your, like having a better life and um, feeling good within your body, you know, having the body and life of your dreams pretty much. So that would really help me out. And also remember that I still have some spots available for one-on-one coaching. And if you want to reach out to me, get a chance to work with me one-on-one, I'd love to do that with you. And so just email Barbara Orban at nodietbabe.com for that. And keep an eye out too. I've got some exciting stuff coming in the works for you guys. And I'm excited to be making a monthly membership so this is going to be lots of fun i can't wait to tell you all about it but anyway guys enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are and i will see you in the next episode thank you so much for tuning in today 
If you loved this episode, I'd love for you to leave me an iTunes review. Don't forget to follow this podcast for more uplifting teachings to come. For more tips, inspiration and teachings, come follow me on Instagram at No Diet Babe or check out my website, nodietbabe.com. Until I see you next time, babes, lots of love.